Hello, this is Physics Chapter 6, Work, Energy and Power. Lesson 5, Principle of Conservation of Energy. Now, this video will discuss this principle of conservation of energy and how it, it applies to a few common situations. Since the term principle of conservation of energy is a very long phrase, from this point onwards in my video, I will refer to it as simply COE. Okay? Now let's have a look at what we will be learning in detail. Now what you will be learning in detail would be these two key points. First, we will want to understand what is conversion of energy and the second one, what is conservation of energy. Okay, in the next slide, we will have a look at conversion of energy, what it means by conversion of energy. Well, conversion here refers to how energy can be converted from one particular form to another. Let's take a burning candle as an example. Well, you know that the candle has stored energy. And this stored energy is also known as chemical potential energy. So when the candle is burning, it gives out light and heat. You know that, right? So the energy conversion for this particular situation is from chemical potential energy changing to light and heat energy. Let's look at another example here. In this particular diagram, we find uh, we see that there's a battery and a light bulb, and there's some invisible wires connecting these two together. All right. So let us recap what's conversion of energy. Basically, it refers to how energy is converted from one particular form to another. So for this particular example, if you have been thinking in your head earlier on, well, the conversion of energy is from chemical potential energy changing to electrical energy and then to light plus a little bit of heat energy over here, then you are right, okay? So now let's move on to COE. Well, what is COE? COE basically says this. It says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to another. So to understand this, let me share this information about the amount of energy in our universe. I'm sure you know that there is a lot of energy in our universe. But do you know that this amount is fixed? Yes, indeed. The amount of energy in our whole universe is fixed, meaning that it remains the same. So this also means that energy cannot be created or destroyed because the amount of energy cannot change. It is fixed at that same fixed amount. Now, so let us go back to our earlier example of the burning candle over here. Let's imagine, okay? That a candle provides 100 joules of energy, of chemical potential energy, and if 70 joules of this is converted to light energy, my question to you is, how much heat energy is created? If you said 30 joules, then you're right. Indeed, the candle as it is burned up, <clears throat> 100 joules of energy from this chemical potential energy cannot be destroyed. Instead, it is converted to 70 joules of light and 30 joules of heat energy. Hence, this means that the amount of energy in this system of a burning candle is actually conserved. Now, let us have a look at a case where there is a conversion of kinetic and potential energy. For this particular example, we will be looking at a pendulum. And you are familiar with the pendulum because you have actually used that before in the lab. Right, so if you look at this pendulum setup, I'd like you to just take a moment to have a look at how uh, as this pendulum bob swings from A to B repeatedly, I would like you to notice how the energy bar is changing over here. Alright, at position A, when we just release the pendulum bob at the beginning, notice that the speed is actually zero. As a result, since it's high above the ground, the PE was actually maximum at that position. Alright, and notice that for as the bob passes through position B, the position of the bob is just slightly above the ground. This is considered to be the ground. 
If that's the case, the amount of GPE of the bob at position B is just slightly more than zero. In that case, as you look at this, it's just slightly more than zero. We will consider that to be effectively zero. Okay. So let us start the journey here. Let us have a look at how the energy changes from position A to B. Okay. Take note that at position A, the GPE is maximum, while the KE is zero when it is at rest for a short moment. Right? So as it swings towards B, notice that the kinetic energy at B is maximum, right? It's maximum, while the, the GPE at position B is almost zero, right? So what's actually happening here? Well, you would have guessed by now, as the bob moves from A to B, it loses height. The height above ground becoming, is becoming less and less. As a result, the GPE is changing. It is actually decreasing. Logically, you also know that as the bob swings down to B, the speed of the bob increases. Therefore, the kinetic energy of the bob will actually increase. So as it moves from A to B, let's recognize that there's a drop in GPE and there's a gain of kinetic energy. So if there's a case from point, to A, from point A to B, the conversion of energy will be from GPE to kinetic energy of the bob. How about from B to C? You know that as the bob moves from B to C, it will start to slow down while it is in, uh, gaining height. So if that's the case, from B to C, we can say that the kinetic energy actually decreases. It loses kinetic energy while it gains gravitational potential energy. So in other words, the conversion of energy from point B to C would be changing from kinetic energy to GPE. All right. Now, let us have a look at another example of a car moving down a slope. Again, have a look at how the energy bar is changing as the car moves down the slope. All right. At the highest point A, notice that the potential energy is highest at that position. And when the car is released, it will start to roll down the track. So as it rolls down the track, you know that the speed of the car will actually increase. So therefore, this is shown as an increasing rate bar over here. Okay. Since C is very near to the ground, you find that at position C, there is still a little bit of potential energy. right? And what is interesting is that when you look at the sum of the red and blue bar, both of these, when we sum it up, it will give us the same amount of total energy. So this means that energy is conserved. The total amount of energy at position A, which is purely gravitational potential energy, when once it reaches C, you will have somewhat a little bit of potential energy, but a lot of kinetic energy. When we sum these two up, it will still give us the same amount. Okay. So for the car to move from A to C, in summary, the energy change would be from gravitational potential energy changing to kinetic energy. Now, just to give some numbers, all right, so if the GPE at position A is 100 joules, as a car slides down the track and reaches this ground at this particular position, the kinetic energy of this car would therefore be 100 joules as well. Now, let's have a look at an example of how we can apply COE. Okay, let's look at this particular case whereby we have a ball with a mass of 5 kg and the ball is released from a building of 20 meters high. Okay, so let's calculate these three parts. Okay, the first will be the GPE of the ball before it starts to fall at 20 meters high. Its kinetic energy at the bottom of the building just before it strikes the ground. And lastly, the velocity of the ball just before it strikes the ground. So to calculate the potential energy, recall from the last video that we have a special formula for this purpose. Okay, and this formula is PE equals to MGH. Recall that M stands for mass, G for gravity on Earth, and H for the height in meters. Substituting all the values in, we get 5 kg of ball, the mass of the ball, 10 is the gravity on Earth, and 20 is the height of the building, and therefore we find that the gravitational potential energy of the ball is 1000 joules. To solve Part B, which is to determine the kinetic energy of the ball just before it hits the ground, we can apply the conservation of energy. 
Recognizing that this total amount of energy remains the same at the top of the building and just before it hits the ground, we can therefore equate potential energy on the top of the building to be equal to the Ke at the bottom or near the or near the ground. Okay, hence the kinetic energy of the ball just before it hit the ground will also be a thousand joules. To solve part C, which is to calculate the speed of the ball just before it hits the ground, let's recall this equation for kinetic energy. From the previous uh, video, we also not know that kinetic energy can be calculated with this formula, which is half mv squared, where m is the mass and v is the speed of the ball. Since we know from conservation of energy that Ke is now a thousand joules, all right, we can rewrite the equation in this way. And solving it, we have V or the speed to be 20 meters per second. Now, lastly, the concept of efficiency. This concept is applicable only to students taking the GCE O levels. If you are a student taking the N levels, then you may just want to skip this slide. In our lives, we want 100% energy efficient processes, isn't it? For example, if I were to use 100 joules of chemical potential energy, I would want to have 100 joules of light energy, isn't it? If that is the case, that would be the best deal in the world. However, the world does not work in this way. There are some energy, for example, heat, which is created. Okay. Now, so what happens here if there is an input energy of 100 joules resulting in a 80 joules of light energy? You know for a fact from COE, 20 joules has been used or has been converted into heat energy. And heat energy is not useful for us as a light bulb. All right? So we say that for this particular circuit, the efficiency of this circuit is simply just 80%. How do we get that 80%? Well, we calculate efficiency with this simple formula. By taking the useful output energy, which is a light energy, and divide by the amount of input energy. So for this particular example, we have 80 joules divided by 100, that will give us 0 0.80. In terms of percentage, that will be 80%. In reality, a lot of, our, of, a lot of things in our, in our world have efficiency ranging from about 60 to about 80-90%. So that basically brings us to the end of this video. All right, Just a quick summary. Uh, the idea of conservation and converse conservation of energy is simply that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy can only change form from one to another. Well, thank you for listening.